we will continue studying the Bible. He commanded it so. Says as often as we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we do it in remembrance of him. We will not forget. We'll be having more and more. And so it's important we do as he commanded us to continue in his word. And in his word, we shall continue. Now, the title of our study is The Word is God. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to read from Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 to 8. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the lord the lord god merciful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that we by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation and moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped amen, amen. Then moses worshipped him told moses to come to the mountain after he broke the first stone tablets says you come up again so Moses is now in Mount Sinai or Horeb. And said the Lord passed by before him. And then he proclaimed, he spoke, and pronounced and advertised himself through his word. Says that Moses heard the word and then he made haste and bowed his head towards the earth towards the ground and worshiped for him alone to be worshiped so that the word is god that when he passed by he didn't pass by silently and not say anything he spoke and then by so doing showcase his presence made his presence active so as soon as moses not knew that he is present then he worshiped he, he, that means we need the word of god to worship god we need the word of god to deal with god without the word we cannot deal we need his word is what we are studying tonight that the word of God is what will give us give us access to the spirit of God. That God is a spirit, and this spirit you can't see him. Now he said, when he passed by, he proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God. That is, he is in his word, and the word is him. He wants us to know. And this is how he brings his own to himself. So he showed Moses this. And then Moses also reminded his people of what happened to them. Even the whole multitude of Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35 and 36. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the lord he is god there is none else beside him there's not another there is only one one god he is the lord god of the holy scriptures verse 36 out of heaven he made thee 
to hear his voice that he might instruct thee. And upon earth he showed thee his great fire. And thou hearest his words out of the midst of the fire. Says you heard his voice from heaven, like Moses heard the voice. Now he said that's not all. He also showed you his great fire, which is his word, the word of God. So he showed it to you, and there's nothing on earth near to him. He is greater than all. Says that we are to worship him. We are to bow before him. He is our maker. That by the word of the Lord, we were made, we were created. He is God. There is no else. So he says that you have seen that he is God. That the true God you heard of, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, spoke to you. That there is none else. And then he now gave you this awesome word so that this word will enter you and be with you. You will know him, that he is the only true God. There is none else, there is no substitute, no one like him. None at all. Don't let any situation confuse you. There is not anywhere else he is than in his word. And this is why he is calling us so that we'll be hearing the voice of his word. That the voice of God is in his words. Say so when you hear, say so thou hearest his words that we are to hear and know that he is God and that he seek to enter us so that the spirit of God will be in each and every one of us. We will know him. We will not give room or open door to anything else. Look at his servant, another of his servant, Elijah, and see what the Lord did to him in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 to 13. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. For the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, what dost thou hear, Elijah? Amen. Yeah. Says that Elijah worshiped the word, the voice of his word. That when the Lord passed by, then there was a great wind that rent the mountains. If Elijah didn't know the Lord, if he is not the servant of the Lord, if he didn't have the spirit of the Lord, he would uh, go after the wind. He can even start a ministry and call it ministry of wind, wind renting mountains. Not Elijah. No, he didn't move. Then he says after the wind came an earthquake. The whole place was shaking, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. See, the ignorance may not be able to tell the difference, but the man who knew, who had the spirit of the word, knew quite well that that's not where he is. He is not in the earthquake. 
there may be kind of noise going around everywhere says the sons of Ella brought the ark to the war front the Israelites shouted the whole ground was shaking the Philistines were afraid but the Lord was not with them see say so we can have revival everybody's jumping and playing music and singing the whole place shaking we think that we have God is filling us no the people that do know their God don't move because of shaking. No. He says after the earthquake, there was fire. And the Lord was not in the fire. Whatsoever fire it may be. Say so the Lord was not there. And so what is God telling us or showing to us is that the word is God. And once we come to this commander, they will listen to the voice of his word. We will listen to him. We will not be moved by oration. We will not be moved by enticing words of men. We will listen to the speaker, whether he is speaking of the word. That will be the only thing that will move you. Noises and the renting the mountain didn't move Elijah. We shouldn't go to fellowship or listen to people and then we just be moved because someone can speak well. No, listen to his testimony. Is he preaching the word? Is he speaking of the living? If he is, then you know the spirit of the living word has entered him. And so he said, when as soon as Elijah heard the voice, then he was moved. You see, you should be moved by the testimony of the Bible and the speaking of the word. And that is where he is, that the word, he is God. That's why we preach him. We preach the word of God. Why? So that many may hear him. Many may open to him so that the spirit will enter them. Once the spirit of the word enter you, you will know the good shepherd. Say the good shepherd, the, the, the sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Elijah was the sheep of the shepherd. As soon as he heard the voice of the shepherd, he went to the cave mouth, he bowed himself, he covered himself this time, that is worship. He was afraid, so he wrapped his face as a mark of respect, as a mark of worship to the Lord. And then the Lord said, Elijah, what are you doing here? My God, what a wonderful God we serve. People don't know that God is a spirit. He lives. And then he wants us to come to him by his word. That's why his apostle said this in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Saint Apostle Peter says we heard his voice before I was running my mouth. I said, let's make three tabernacles here. I was not listening. I didn't know that God lived. He talked with men. And see, until the cloud came and knocked them and made them to bow. And then the voice came from the excellent glory that he is living. And then he now showed them the great fire. That Jesus is that fire. That word. You know, he said when he prayed, he transfigured. And then, you know, some will say, you see, God is too. No. God can make, he can speak from heaven, he can speak from earth. Have you not heard that he feel both heaven and earth? Why should we think that he is boxed up into one location? 
He can speak from heaven. We say we heard this voice from excellent glory and showed him to us that this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear you him, listen to the word, listen to the scriptures that he advertised the word to us who did so the Holy Spirit of the Bible said the apostle that we didn't know him until he showed us the living that the word of God is living and powerful and so he's telling us that he is our God we are to worship him and that's why he said in continuing verse 19 of second Peter 1 we have also a more sure word of prophecy where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Says this world is dark. This place is a dark place. We are living in a dark world. For there's light. So this light is the light of God. This light is shining in the face of Jesus Christ. This light can enter you. The entrance of this light will give you light and give you understanding. Say so we have a more sure word of prophecy that you do where well, you take heed. That all these words in the Bible came by men, God moving them. But he is greater than them. He spoke to our fathers in the past by the prophets. So none of the scripture came privately in verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. No. He, he, this word came from the spirit. Every word in the Bible made you to hear the voice from heaven that showed you the living fire, even the Holy Scriptures on earth. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Says, take heed to this sure word of prophecy. There's nothing near to the Holy Bible on earth. Nothing near. It's the greatest treasure in the whole universe. Says he showed him to you that he is God of heaven and earth. There is none else when he brought him into the world. He said he commanded all the angels to worship him. And that's why the angel told John that worship God. He is God. When the and John wanted to worship the angel that was giving him the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation of the word of God, the angel said to him, take him, you don't do so. I'm a servant of him. I'm preaching the word to you. He is our God. And you do well, you take heed to this God. You listen to him. You know, many are looking for God, but Apostle Peter said, you do well, you take heed to this God. Yeah, the holy word of God is not ordinary. He is the beloved son of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave birth to every word in the Holy Bible. As he said in John chapter 4, Verse 23 and 24, but the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. How can you worship this spirit? Through his word. How did Moses worship him? By his word. Say, as soon as Moses heard the voice of the word, he made haste and bowed himself to the ground and worshiped. How did Elijah worship him? Not in the wind, no, not in the earthquake, not in fire, in the word. By the word, there's no other way we can come to the Father except through His Son and His Son alone. 
say the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For God is a spirit, that spirit gave back to every word in the Bible. He is our God. Today, tomorrow, and forever. And anyone who does not turn to this God has stumbled and fell. He's a, he's the devil has deceived such person. Anybody who stumbled at this word of God, this word we are preaching, and won't ignore it, is falling. If they tell you that God, is, Jesus, is going to come from somewhere else, is that person is a deceiver, is a child of the devil, a deceiver that want to send people to hell. Who is going to come from heaven? No, he said, no, don't say he's going to bring Jesus down from heaven to have his excellent voice from heaven. Now, who is going to go to the grave and bring him up again? No, the word is near you, even in your mouth. Believe on him. Whom God has sent, this is the only route to God. This is the only way you can worship God. You don't need to go to the mountain, Mount Sinai anymore. No. No, go to Mount Horeb. You know, the same mountain Elijah was called to come up to. And Jesus took the disciples to the mountain. But he himself said to the woman of Samaria, you don't need to go to any mountain. The hour comes. Now he is. Are you hearing? Today you come to Jesus Christ. Right. You come to this living, active mountain, the mountain of deliverance, the mountain of healing, the mountain of breakthrough. Right. Where is he? In the Bible. When they come and make noises unto you, you say, God is there. He said, God is not there. God is in this world. If this spirit has entered you, the God will be sounding from you. Hallelujah. So that's what Jesus said. He said, once you receive my spirit, you all will become witnesses unto me. And so he did. On the Pentecost day, he lighted up 120 of them. And then he said, they spoke as the spirit gave them utterance. He filled every one of them. If you belong to this God, this God of the Holy Bible, you will speak as he gives you utterance. And then you will know the difference. But when we are in the religious market, share that in the religious market, we can't tell the difference. But Elijah could tell the difference. Moses could tell the difference. Peter said we could tell the difference. If one don't know him, he won't know whom we are preaching. So if our gospel is hid, is hid to those who are lost. This God has never entered them. He told Jeremiah, I did not send those false prophets. They said, Lord, send them. He said, if I'm the one that sent them, they would have long torn everybody to the scriptures. Is my word not like fire? Is this word not a fire? The fire will burn in the hands of human beings. But why is the fire not burning? Why is it that it's fire of men? Fake fire. They call it fire on the mountain. Fake fire. That's not fire. Elijah didn't react to fire on the mountain. He could have made the ministry mountain fire or whatever. No. He said the world. Is that fire that can enter inside you? And then it will be burning in your heart. Be born in your soul. You know, this fire is heavenly fire. It's the fire that can never be quenched. He said, He showed you the great fire on earth. The fire that will be shut up inside you. If they say, Keep quiet, don't preach again, it will be shut. It will be hot inside you. It will vent out again. And tell them that they are liars. They have never seen God at all. Anyone who has seen this God, it will become a witness of Him. It will be bold. It will move in the strength of the revelation. And so that's why God is calling us to show us God. The word is God. He has always been, say in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. 
For he is still God today. That's why he says, I'm he that is, was, and is to come. The almighty Jesus says there will be one who know that there is only one speaker that spoke in the beginning and creation manifested. Where is he? In the book. Take heed. Study the Bible. He said, none of this would fail. That every word in the Bible must come to pass. They are set up to manifest. And then you do where you take heed to him, he said, the apostle says, that God is a spirit. If we say we are worshiping God and we don't have the spirit of God, that is fake worship. That is, you can never worship God without his spirit. It's impossible. And so many things that you go and practice in the flesh and then, then in through the flesh, you say, I belong to God. The Bible says you cannot belong to God that way. Flesh and blood can never inherit the kingdom of God. If you seek for his spirit, what spirit? The spirit of the Bible. If the spirit that gave birth to the Bible, if this whole scripture we read today came through the Holy Spirit, it means you need the Holy Spirit to preach the word. Man. That's why he says, until you receive my spirit, you cannot be witnesses unto me. If the prophet had to receive the spirit of the word of God, and they spoke as they were moved by the spirit, how can we belong to the same spirit and then uh, the same God and we don't have his spirit in us? Cannot be so. There's only one spirit. Say so by one spirit that we are baptized into one book, one body. Everybody. He baptized Moses into it. He baptized Elijah into it. He can baptize you into it if you are ready. All you need to do is to believe that the word is God. That word is in the Bible. It says, no, there is none as he is God. He told them in the wilderness by Moses that you heard him. There is not another God anywhere that is going to save you. There is not another God you have to worship. Or oh, the Father is seeking for everybody to worship him through his word. This word he gave to us in the Bible, come to the Father through his Son. The Son of God is this book, and this book alone. My God, are you ready? Receive him while you have hope today. Don't let them deceive you. You can go to church all your life, and that person will perish. But if you come to discover that what you need is the spirit of the word of God, you will do like Moses. When you discover what you need in the spirit of the word of God, you will do as Elijah. Once you come to him, by him speaking to you, it says, if you continue my word, the spirit will come. It must enter you. And then out of you will be flowing rivers of living waters. Wonderful. What a God we serve. Thank God we have God today. We are standing on this authority. On this power, we are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. We are standing on the word of God. The word of God is power. You are going to pray to him. He said to Moses, stand on this place. I will pass by you. You will hear me. Now he told Elijah, stand here. I will, you will hear me. I will speak to you. Now today he said, you don't need to do that. You stand by him. You stand by the word of God, then the spirit of the word of God, will, you will hear him talk to you. Concerning who? Concerning his word. He will speak to you. Concerning this one, then you will hear the voice from the excellent glory. That this is my beloved son. So you are going to pray and so God speak for your servant. Hear it. Uh, speak to me as you spoke to all your servants so that your spirit will enter me. Oh, pray in Jesus' mighty name. 
Almighty Savior, eternal spirit, inject your spirit into us. Oh God, the spirit of the Bible, let the spirit of God enter us. Let the spirit of the Holy Bible enter every one of us. Then we become witnesses unto you. We will speak as the spirit gives us all our trials. Amen. 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 We need the spirit of God to enter into us so that we can be true worshippers because the Bible says that worship the Lord must worship in spirit and truth. Today's topic says the word is God. And what we have eaten now is just the word of God. We have drunk of the spirit of God again today. Let us go to pray to God, Father, as we continue to eat this platform and your spirit rest upon us. Mighty Father, heaven, spirit. As you take speak to us concerning your word, let the spirit of your word into us in this part from every one of us represented here. Oh God, we pray that your spirit will come mighty upon us. And inside us, oh living spirit, the spirit of the Bible, the Holy Spirit of the Bible, enter us, enter every one of us. And then God will sound in, you know, we become sons and daughters of God through your spirit. 